Hey homegirl, welcome to the Responsible Homegirl YouTube channel. I am Kiani, the Responsible Homegirl. Thank you so much for being here. We are currently in a series called From Surviving to Thriving, where we are talking about 21 money lessons that every woman needs to know as she is building a solid financial foundation. If you are new to this series, I would highly encourage you that you go back and check out part one and you pick up my book 21 Before 21, 21 Money Lessons That You Need to Learn by the time you can legally drink. So let's hop into money lesson number five, pay yourself first. I'd be like, save before you pay bills, save before you pay bills, pay yourself first, pay yourself first. I really feel like a broken record as I consistently say that, but I'm not gonna stop saying it because you probably don't do it. And if you do do it, I'm proud of you, sis. But if you're listening to me and you don't do it, this is why you need to do it. So always pay yourself first. This means saving before you pay a bill or spend money. Prioritize your savings. Don't put your savings on the back burner. Prioritizing your savings ensures that your account is constantly growing and provides a safety net for your future needs. By saving before you pay bills, you create a sense of security that can help you weather any financial storm. It's not if something's going to happen, it's when something's going to happen. And it's up to you to be prepared for it. Period. Always save with purpose knowing that you're building a foundation of financial stability. For instance, if an emergency happens, you might be frustrated, but not stressed because you're prepared. Reflect on my own experience. If I had prioritized saving money instead of putting it off with the thought of I'll save later, how many times do we say that and we never do it? I would have never been in a situation where I couldn't pay my rent if I had been saving consistently. This is a powerful reminder of the importance of paying yourself first and the potential consequences of not doing so. Now that we've established to pay yourself first, how much exactly should you save? And that's always a question that I'm asked. Key, how much money should I save? How much money should I save? I recommend that you aim to save at least 10% of your money every single time you get paid. However, there may be seasons when you save more and sometimes less, but at least 10% per paycheck is the standard. If you can't save the 10%, that's cool. Save something. Don't despise the small beginnings. Don't look at your paycheck and your bills and say, dang, I can't save 10%, so I'm not going to save nothing at all. No, save something because the something that you do save, the small things, they compound, they add up to bigger and better things. So make sure that you pay yourself first. Money lesson number six, save with purpose. Motives matter more than you know. I am always the girly that's going to tell you, start with why. Why are you doing it? Even with the things that you hear me talk about, don't just take my word for it and apply it to your life. No, you need to ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because you're not going to consistently do something. You're not going to stay with something if you don't understand why you're doing it. It has to be a purpose behind why you're saving. And whether that's saving for an emergency, whether that's saving to pay down debt, saving to invest, saving to move, saving for whatever, you need to have a purpose beyond just, I'm saving just to save, because that's not going to keep you in the game. You are going to look at that savings account and say, oh, this money look real good in here. It's time for me to go to Cancun. And you can go to Cancun if that was the purpose of you saving the money, but you don't need to be going to Cancun with your emergency fund money. I hope that makes sense. So make sure you always save with purpose. Money lesson number seven, open a high yield savings account. Another one that I'm always screaming from the mountaintop, but I'm going to continue screaming because again, you watching this video, you might not have one. If you have one, I'm so proud of you, sis. If you don't, go create one today. A high yield savings account is so important because it pays you a higher interest rate on your money compared to a traditional savings account. A high yield savings account helps you build discipline and creates boundaries around your savings because with a traditional savings account, you can do that quick little transfer and you can get your money in seconds. With a high yield savings account, baby girl, that is not happening. It's going to take you at least two to three business days to even get access to that money. So if you are a person, you don't struggle with saving money, your struggle is touching the money, a high yield savings account is going to help you out so much. So a few things to look for when you are creating your high yield savings account. Any fees that may be associated with the account. The minimum deposit amount. 
this is the amount that is required to open up and most of the accounts is zero dollars so it's no excuse as to why everyone watching this video doesn't have a high yield savings account Number three, the interest rate. But don't get married to the interest rate because the interest rates, they can go up and they can go down. But nine times out of ten, they're always going to be higher than a traditional savings account. And then four, any features or unique benefits of having that high yield savings account. So those are the things that you typically want to look for when you are creating a high yield savings account. And one recommendation that I always give is bankrates.com where you can go and compare different high yield savings accounts. I have my high yield savings account with Capital One. It's called a Capital One 360 account. I love it. It does its job. It gets the job done. Like it's nothing. And I don't mean to be so like, I don't even know the word for it, but it's nothing deep. <laughs> like your money is literally sitting in this account, sitting in this account and it is growing. And the more money that you put in this account, the more interest you will earn. So the more money that you put in there, the more money that you will make. It's as simple as that. The main thing that I'm looking at is interest rate, fees, and how much it's going to cost for me to actually open it up. So now let's hop into money lesson number eight. Now, on the surface level, this may not seem like a lesson that can help you save money. But I'm telling you, from past experience, and I'm pretty sure you watching this video, you can identify as well. It will help you save more than you ever know. So money lesson number eight says, don't loan what you can't afford to lose. And I'm going to let that marinate. Because most of my responsible homegirls, they love to play Jesus Jr. We love to come through and save the day and be there for our friends and loan the money and do this and do that. Knowing, and I'm not even going to say knowing. Unknow mm, I'm not even going to say knowing. Because it comes from, or it can come from a place of kindness and genuinely wanting to help out. But we don't do it in regards to our own financial situation. So let me read this to you. A mentor once told me, banks give loans, family and friends give gifts. Don't loan what you can't afford to lose. As you start working and saving money, someone you love may want to borrow money from you. There's nothing wrong with helping a loved one out in their time of need, but if you can't afford to lose the amount of money you loan them, don't lend the money. Period. And if you're watching this and you're a people pleaser, I know you're probably cringing right now because you're probably already thinking, oh, if I don't lend them the money, what am I going to say? How am I going to have this conversation? How is that going to leave our, our relationship? So many things that you can just be thinking about right now. Keep listening. Many relationships have ended because someone loaned someone money and the other person didn't repay it. For the sake of the relationship and a peace of mind, something that you cannot put a price on, consider whether you can afford to lose the money you plan to lend. If you can lose it, help the friend out. If you can't, kindly tell them no. Setting this boundary may be challenging, but it'll be worth it in the long run. And the key word that I want you to hear is boundary. We have to have boundaries around our personal life, around our financial life, because takers will take, 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 and givers will give, 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 give. And as a giver, I do not want you to adopt this victim mentality like, oh, I try my best to help everybody out and I just give you. No, you need to take accountability because there is also something in you that feels like, oh, when somebody calls my phone and wants to borrow money, I have to give it to them knowing I haven't even checked in with my own financial situation. And if I can't afford to lose it, why am I lending it? And I'm not saying this from a place of judgment. It's really from a place of wisdom because I used to be the girly who would just loan my friends money, not really looking at my own financial situation. So make sure that you understand if you can't afford to lose it, don't lend it. I would rather tell my friend no than us fall out and we not have a relationship anymore because I loaned her money that I really couldn't afford to lose and now I'm mad because she didn't pay it back when I really need the money. So those are money lessons five through eight. I hope they were extremely helpful for you. If it was, share this with your homegirl and continue to rock with me as I continue this series from surviving to thriving. 
the next couple of money lessons are going to be really good. It just keeps getting better and better, better and better and building on that financial foundation. Just different money lessons that nobody have taught us. And life has a way of being a great teacher. Life is a great teacher. Experience is a great teacher. But again, like my mama always said, baby, you do not have to touch the stove to know what's hot. So if I can share some financial, some money lessons with you that you haven't already been taught or haven't experienced, just listen so that you can avoid some of the mistakes that I've made and that we can continue to pass this information on from generation to generation, helping out our, our cousins, our nieces, our nephews, our kids, if you have kids. So thank you for rocking with me. And always remember with exposure, execution, and consistency, there's absolutely nothing you can't do. See you in the next video.